Now we're going to keep looking at variation, but look at joint variation. So, so far we've looked at direct and inverse variation, and now we're going to look at joint, which is actually very similar to direct variation. But now, instead of just having x and y, we have three variables, x, y, and z. So joint variation is when a variable is directly proportional to the other two variables. So now I have the x, y, z. My equation is y equals k, x, z where k is still the constant of variation. So this is very similar to our direct variation, which was just y equals kx. But now I've got that third variable that I'm just going to multiply in there to get kxz. Our steps are still the same, but now they're going to give us more information to have that other variable thrown in there. So for example, if y varies jointly as x and z, y equals 12 when x equals 9 and z equals 3, we want to find z when x, y equals 6 and x equals 15. Okay, so I'm going to come to the second part, second part of my sentence. That's what I'm looking for. I want to find z when y equals 6 and x equals 15. Well, my uh, equation is y equals kxz. So y is 6, k, and then we know x is 15, and I'm looking for z. Well, right now I cannot solve for z because this k is in there, so I need to find that constant of variation. Then I can solve for z. So to find the constant of variation, I'm going to come back to the first part of the sentence, or the middle in this one, where it tells me what all three variables are at that time. So then I'm going to say y equals kxz. y is 12. Looking for k. Uh, x is 9. z is 3. Alright, so I get 12 equals 9 times 3 is 27. To get k by itself, I'm going to divide by 27. Oops, not 12, 27. Alright, uh, 12 does not divide by 27 evenly, but I can simplify it. 3 goes into both of those. So my k ends up being 4 ninths. So now I'm going to take that k and plug it back in over here for k. So I have 6 equals 4 ninths times 15 times z, and I want to solve for z. So I'll start with doing 4 ninths times 15, which would give me 4 times 15 is 60. So 60 ninths, and I can simplify that a little bit just to make my math a little easier. Um, 3 goes into both of these, so I end up with 20 thirds. And now to get z by itself, I can start by multiplying by 3, getting rid of the de denominator. 6 times 3 is 18, so I get 18 equals 20z, and then divide by 20 to get z by itself. So 18 is not divide by 20, but we can simplify it. Uh, 2 goes into both of those, so I end up with 9 over 10 for z. And that's okay to have a fraction or a decimal uh, in variation. If y varies jointly as x and z, and y equals 33 when x equals 9 and z equals 12, find y when x equals 16 and z equals 22. So now, find y, and it gives me x and z. So if I write my original equation, y equals kxz, I want to find y, and I can plug in 16 for x, 22 for z. Again, I can't solve for y until I know what k is. So I'm going to use the 3 that it gives me to start with to find k. So I've got y equals kxz. I can plug in 33 for y. Looking for k. 9 for x. And 12 for z. So I've got 33 equals 9 times 12 is 108. k. Divide by 108. So then I get k equals, and 108 is not going to 33, but I can simplify them. Uh, 3 goes into 33 to get 11, and 3 goes into 136. So k equals 11 over 36. All right. Um, now we take 11 over 36 and plug it in for the k over here. So we have y equals 11 over 36 times 16 times 22 which ends up being a big fraction that simplifies down nicely to 968 over 9. Which isn't a very pretty number, but it's still an acceptable answer.
right? So a joint variation just means that you throw that third variation in there, and it's kind of like a form of direct variation. It means that the one variable is directly proportional to both of the other two variables. And so you find your constant of variation, and then you can find any of the variables it's asking.